watching KLST. Local news first with Kristen Strachalitis and meteorologist Heath Bradberg. This is KLST News at Noon. Welcome back to News at Noon. I am joined now with Lita uh, Boatman and she is with Cruise Planners. And Lita, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's good to be here. Um, so, Lita, let's talk a little bit about Alaska. And I know there's a lot of great ways we can experience it. Um, can you share some of those ways? Yes, I'd love to. Uh, no matter what your travel style or your age is, Alaska has something for everyone. And there's, there's just so many options that it's often hard to decide what's best for you. So I advise consult a travel advisor to help you decide. You know, cruises are a very popular way to see Alaska, and there's a lot of different ports like Seattle, uh, just south of Anchorage at Seward, Whittier, Vancouver. You know, there's small ships, large ships, expedition ships are very popular. Um, the smaller ships get into areas that the larger ones cannot. But the best way to really see Alaska, though, is to combine a cruise with a land tour. That way you can see the interior of the state, like Mount McKinley at Denali National Park, or go into the Yukon. Um, if you're not interested in a cruise, try a rail vacation. The Alaska Railroad has some fabulous tours and trains. Um, and the one that everyone always asks me about is the glass domed rail car, which I've done and it is awesome. Um, and, and those are available in combination with cruises or land vacations also. Um, the lodges in Alaska are, are beautiful. They've got amazing views. Um, they're very rustic because, you know, Alaska style is, is rugged. Um, wildlife is abundant. You can see eagles, whales, moose, uh, bears, caribou, and, and the landscapes are just incredible. Um, Lita, I see on here um, kayaking, and I actually know someone that went to Alaska and did some kayaking, and he just loved it. Him and his wife had a blast. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of great ways to go kayaking, um, lots of, of outdoor activities uh, like kayaking and rafting. You can ki do sea kayaking right up to the glaciers which is truly amazing. And there's some rivers also that you can go rafting or kayaking. You can do hiking, fishing, whale watching. Um, you can go flight seeing where you can go in by helicopter or plane and get really a great view of the glaciers or even land on the glaciers. And also dog sledding, that's an option. Dog sledding, yes. You can do the summer version, uh, which is kind of like their summer camp when they're training. But also, you can um, fly in, land on the glacier, and do do regular dog sledding like you would for like an Iditarod race. You can even travel in the winter and go see the Northern Lights and actually attend the Iditarod race. Oh, I'm just looking at these pictures. Oh, there's the dog sledding. Very nice. Uh, but it just it looks beautiful. And now, is Alaska always cold? No. No, no, especially not in the late spring to early fall. It's very pleasant. The weather is beautiful. Of course, you know, it's a little bit rainy off and on. It's very unpredictable. But the temperatures are, are fabulous, especially coming from Texas, where it's hot in the summer. You can go up there, and it's it's like being there in the spring. You know, it's it's fabulous. Yeah, no, a little bit of a change, but not in a bad way at all. I mean, just looking at those pictures, absolutely gorgeous. Um, all right, well, hey, thank you so much, Lita. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but oh. you take care, okay, my friend? Thank you, Kristen. All right, take care. Bye bye. And coming up next, we'll have Heath Bradberg in the Weather Center with our weekend forecast. So don't go anywhere. You're watching News at Noon.